Mr. Mad is back online. Hello. <laughs> I'll tell you who's mad. Who? Anyone who squeezes toothpaste over their head and then combs it in. <laughs> Raving, Raving mad. Raving mad. Who else? Anyone who's got planning permission to build a bungalow up Simon Mayo's nose. <laughs> they would I be mad. I went this morning when I had that. I said, you're raving mad. Who else is mad? Pamela Armstrong, the newsreader. She's raving mad. Anyone called Floater McVitty Poos. <laughs> Floater McVitty Poos. Yeah, raving mad. Who else? Lord Thornycroft's cat. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> He's Ray, mad. Raving mad. All telecom spark is up a pole in the East Midlands. Raving mad? Raving mad. Who else? Anyone listening to your show in Amsterdam? Oh, yeah, raving, raving mad. mad. Who, who else? Jolly Drake, he's mad. <laughs> Anyone who sucks their um, elbows. Sucks their elbows. Raving mad. Who else? Dion Warwick. He's mad. Anyone who eats a high <laughs> Anyone who eats the hard shoulder on the northbound slip road at Junction 8 of the M6. Who eats it? That's what I seen a bloke do that this morning. I said, you're raving mad. <laughs> Jim Kerr out of Simple Minds, He's man. mad, raving mad. Yeah. What? Yeah, I was in a restaurant this morning. Yeah. I said to the waiter, how dare you? I said, how dare you splash soup on my trousers? Yeah. He said, I'm sorry, sir, but you've got soup on your fly. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to fly in your suit, yeah. You're ready to mad, you are. <laughs> Latest information from British Rail. Uh, the West Ealing problems, all lines have now been restored. This means that a full mainline service will be operating out of Paddington this evening. However, the half-hour shuttle remains in operation for local services until tomorrow morning. All right, six minutes to four. Step it up here. Honest to see a foot-long beard on the subject. The subject... Jacqueline Bouchard was amazed herself. Yeah, oh, no. it was a woman. It's another true story across the UK. Commercial free. Britain's favorite radio one. Your afternoon rave here till 5.30. Dull, cool and cloudy. Oh, one. Six, three, seven, four, three, four, three. afternoon, this is Steve Wright in the afternoon for today, Monday. Okay, we have a message from our travel unit for drivers using the M25 in Surrey. An accident involving two heavy goods vehicles has blocked two lanes of the anti-clockwise or eastbound carriageway of the M25 between 6 and 5 there, the Godston Seven Oaks stretch. There are already tailbacks in excess of five miles. And you're advised to find an alternative route for the next hour or so. That's the M25 anti-clockwise or eastbound between junction 6 and 5 down to one lane only as a result of an accident there. Okie doke, this is a really excellent single from Chris Rea on 1FM. <laughs> Just uh, go around and find out what we did at the weekend. What did you do, Bob? I was down in Kent for the All England Merrills Championships. That was oh, the yeah. finals this weekend. This is like a kind of a chess game, right? That's right, yeah, a very old game. How did and, you do, right? Uh, not too good this weekend, I'm afraid. Oh. oh. It's an experience yeah. happening. Uh, went to see uh, Lenny Henry at the Brixton Academy Friday night. A very good show indeed. This was the sickle cell yes, anemia thing. Ra I don't know how much they raised, but I hope it's an awful lot of money. He's a good old boy, Lenny Henry. Saw him on the TV the other day. Looking good, sounding good, and doing good work. What about you, Rich? I went to a 21st birthday party and saw a band called Garp. Garp, <laughs> funnily enough. Yes. Garp. Any good? They were very good for a band with such a silly name. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Kenton? Well, I also went to see a, a new uh, uh, fledgling band in Birmingham called The Who. <laughs> oh, yes. Who? Who? The Who. Do they still smash all the stuff up? No, no, they do. They oh. try and... They just get a bit excited and uh, Zimmer frames everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes another call. 
Roger Daltrey will be on any minute. Were they good, though? They were great, yeah. It was good stuff. OK, how about you, Julian? Well, I was still trying to fix my plumbing. Oh. <laughs> Now. What, an, what an interesting showbiz life you lead. <laughs> You should say hello to the posse who are Mikey and Kenton and Richard and Bob and Catherine and Happening Boy here. Let's hear it for the boys, boys. And hey! Diamond Geezer. Hey! 317. 17 minutes after three, we're taking your faxes and your... Big show in the afternoon helps you make it through the day. Mick Jagger is here now and... Uh... Yeah! Uh, well, I know uh, something happened to you this week. I mean, apart from the tour, didn't uh, it? Yeah. <laughs> what, do you know about my tour, don't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, apart from that. What, what happened there, Mick? Oh, uh, well, we had a couple of days off, so Keith and I went out into the jungle. <laughs> As you, do. As, you do. Yeah, as you do, and it was it was all right until this huge great tiger. Yeah, I think it was the tiger. I didn't stop to question it. But it was it was not of the saber tooth persuasion. But the teeth were big enough, nonetheless. Anyway, and it got hold of Keith. I escaped, and it got hold of Keith. No. All I could hear was Keith going, "Oh, no, Mick, man, Mick, this cat." Cat has got hold of me, man. <laughs> and, I, and I and I thought, I thought, I thought. And then Keith said, Nick, you've got to help me, man. You've got to help me. And then and then I ran away. <laughs> and I haven't seen him for a while. So <laughs> I hope he's alright. I was hope a, he's alright. It I, was a cat, actually. It was a cat. Big cat, cat yeah, for once. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it, Keith? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry it wasn't a lot more exciting, Steve, but that really happened like that. Well, I can't exaggerate it. It's a lovely story. Yes, it is. I'm very sorry. No, but there you are. minutes to four and uh, let's just say good afternoon to michael parkinson because i know he sometimes listens he's doing a good new tv show on the telly at the moment the subject of michael parkinson's hair seems to be of interest in the press is it blonde or is it gray <laughs> it's a big issue michael phone me and i'll put the record straight tv presenter sally magnuson is to quit breakfast news to have a baby uh, she's married to tv director norman stone robin day says i'm sad my marriage ended uh, I doubt I'll try again. And Matt Goss dived for cover in the USA when rival Dallas drug dealers started shooting at one another. Blimey. <laughs> Monday afternoon, and uh, we have a fresh Mr. Mad online here. Hello. <laughs> I ain't fresh, pal. I passed myself by eight years ago. <laughs> who's mad today? I'll tell you who's mad later. All right. <laughs> I'll get that one. I'll tell you where I'm living. <laughs> get that one. <laughs> easy, easy, relax, I'm living relax. underneath... Underneath? A, ...an industrial bench grinder... Yeah. ...in a workshop in Wolverhampton, pal. <laughs> That's where I'm living today. You're barking mad. <laughs> Talk to you later, Mr. Mad. I've got to go now. By the way, <laughs> did, did I, I tell you I was, was mad? mad? reception. The father of the bride, a millionaire real estate developer in Toronto, Canada, had a cassette player instead of a band. Cheap champagne and held the reception in a firehouse to save money. Disgusted Keith said the last straw came when the wedding feast of 90 Whoppers were delivered to the firehouse with no cheese and no fries. <laughs> said bride Donna, I'm glad everybody said he only married for... Married me from daddy's money and the chocolate shake. It's another true story. Steve right in the afternoon. I'm real. Look 
captain speaking. Just I'd like to point out some of the emergency escape routes. If you look to the left of your dial, there's a BBC local radio station. Uh, then to the right, the police frequency channels, followed by an ILR station. But uh, in all my years as a captain, we've never had to use that one. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Okay, if you're interested in I've Told You Before, I Do Not Hate You. Provocative. You're on Radio 1, on the show that's wild and wacky. Monday afternoon and the posse are here. <laughs> And, uh, well, this is something of interest to all of us here. The average boss works an extra 30 days a year. In a supermarket in Bognoriti. <laughs> That's where I'm living right now. What's the name of the supermarket? I can't say, pal. All right. Otherwise, it'll all be rushing in here. I'll talk to you later, I'm Mr. Mad. I'm going to go now. You're barking now. Who did you? I'm raving mad. Right the way. Let's get the manager coming through here. Hang on just a sec. Hang on. Hello, boy. Sydney. How are you, Sydney? Oh, yes, yes. Good. I've been, uh, you know, just uh, catching up on a bit of work for the uh, winter season. As you know, a lot of jigs get fixed up for the winter season. I know. Tonight, I've got to go up to Scotland, of course, which oh, you fixed you? up. Oh, Yeah. Who are you getting near there? You well, want to drive up after the uh, show, are you? No, no. I'm going up by, uh, down here, you know, by plane. Oh, yes. Yes, you yes. fixed it up. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember that. Uh, yes, well, I'd be <laughs> have a good flight up there. You know there's going to be a bit of wind tonight, don't you? A bit uh, puffy, a bit bluff, blustery. We're not worried about that. That'd be OK. Here, listen. I brought round those things round your place last night, those marrows. I left them round the back there, didn't yes, you? Yes, I found them. I found them. Uh, the old Alsatian was sitting on one of them trying to hatch it when I come out there. But uh, we bought it up and made a nice bit of praise, marrow. Oh, that's good. Listen, I have to talk to you later, Sid. I'm a bit yes, busy at yes, the moment. Yes, 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 yes. Speak to you later. All right, then. Hey. Pardon? Hey. What? Hey. Are you there? I'll speak to you later. I'll speak to you later. I'll speak to you later. Goodbye. Yes. Is he there? Hello? Too much, too young. I'm oh, kicking it live all across the UK, Steve, all right. It's that time again, Steve. I yeah. tell you, it is that time again, the time everybody's waiting for. for. Mr. or Mrs. It's Spoons. It's Mr. or Mrs. Spoons time, yeah. that's all right. I'll explain what the Mr. Spoons Award's all about. All the posse here at Radio 1, look through all the faxes you've been sending in, and we pick one name mentioned, and that name could be you. Yep, the person we pick becomes today's Mr. Spoons, the biggest jarhead, meathead and jerk in the UK. Go kicking it live. This means everyone who knows that person must call them Mr. Spoons for the rest of their natural life and write in thick black marker pen, Mr. Spoons on their forehead, which they then, because it's the weekend coming up, they must wear that all weekend. All weekend, OK. So here it comes. Friday's Mr. Spoons could be you. It is. Who is it? Who is it, Diamond Geezer? Who is it? It's Martin Hall of Sun Chemical Leeds. Yes. Yeah. Martin Hall Martin of Sun Hall. Chemical Leeds. You are today's Mr. Spoons. Spoons. And if you know Martin, you must call him Mr. Spoons and get writing Mr. Spoons on his forehead. <laughs> if you see Martin Hall without Mr. Spoons written on his forehead this weekend, you have our permission to go and write it there. Another Mr. <laughs> Spoons Frolic on Monday, Steve-O. Thank you, Diamond Geezer. Coming up on 14 Minutes to 4 on 1FM. Stevie Wonder, Do I Do? When I see...